Hey guys, I'm just making this quick tutorial on tracking in PF Track 2011 and I'm going to show you how to put a 3D object into your scene using Maya after using PF Track. So I've just dragged my footage into PF Track here, double click on it to see it, and then what you want to do is just scrub through it and play through it, and this line will turn green whilst it's playing through. Mine's already green, so I've already done it. And then after you've done it, it will play back as well. So just wait for it to do that quickly. Alright, so after it's done that, put it back to the start. And then what you want to do is, in your window where your footage is, right click on here and go to Auto Track. And then once you have Auto Track up, you want to come down and literally just hit auto track this is a very simple scene so I'm just uh, so it's just quite an easy one to start on if you're just doing this for the first time this will take a couple of seconds so I'll, uh, I'll come back when it's done alright guys so after that's finished tracking through and then tracked back to the start again um, you want to come back to auto track and then right click on your footage again and go object solver. I oh, know, not object solver. Sorry. Oh, if you want to delete something here, you just click delete here. Go back to that. And go camera solver. Oh, so if camera solver is here, just drag the line up to there and it will bring your grid up on here. Now it doesn't look like it's in the right position at the moment, but that's fine. Just uh, have a quick scroll through to make sure it all looks okay. And then what you want to do is um, come down to here in your silver box and click Solve All. And that will scan through and once it's done it, it will stop. And I'll just pause the video again and come back after it's done it because it may take a couple of minutes. Alright, so now it's finished solving, you should be able to scrub through and the grid should stick to the footage. I just got this piece of footage off a, a free stock footage website on the internet loads, so if you want something to just test it on, just look up that and you'll be able to find some videos. <coughs> okay, so once we've done that, I'm going to right click on here again and go to... Orient scene, and that should already come up. Right, so you come down here to orientation and go to you want to click one of your points on your track points. Um, try go for one in the middle of the scene, like one that stays in there all the way through. On your, make sure it's on the ground on the plane where you want to put your 3D objects. Click on there and go edit mode, none, and set origin. And that will move the um, move the pointer to there basically. Then you want to click on edit mode and go to rotate. And so now you can rotate this down and basically get it get the uh, grid so it looks as if it's sitting flat on here. Just push it into position a bit. I think that looks about right. Scan through. Maybe push this down a tiny bit more. Just have a look, look, look through. I think that looks okay. And so go back to edit mode and go on none. And then right click on your footage again and simple as go to export. And now your export window comes up and basically you want to go on your format. I'm using Maya 2011 so click on Autodesk Maya 2011. Um, find the spot where you want it to export to. Um, I'm going to put it in my 3D, 3D jizz. <laughs> yep, MA file format and then just go on save and I think that's all I need to do on here export scene and then it should do it pretty quickly 
And then what I'm doing is go into your file where you saved it, and then just open up the file. Don't save that. Um, right, and that should bring out in Maya. Let's close my attribute editor and texture. Come on, what are you doing? I'm not quite sure why I was doing that. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, right, here we are. Right. So, right, this card's just fiddling around. Right, let's go for the go F so I can send my pivot around here. And now, what I want to do is, if I go into my outliner and select the PF track data. You won't be able to see the footage yet because I need to load it in. So if I go back into my attribute editor, let's give it a few seconds because it will clunk around. And then get my um, camera window. And then I want to go into, just find the right one. I think it's this, yeah. Camera 01 plane. And then what I want to do is what I done earlier was because I put um made my video clip into still images as a image sequence so it goes into Maya a lot more happier because putting mid videos in can be really annoying sometimes. I've had problems with it, but yeah, just put a make an image sequence in After Effects, save it into a file, and then if you click on the file um button in your camera is there one plane in that attribute editor and then locate your images and so we go to my pf track where is it oh random projects and yeah tracking images okay and then just click on the first one and hit open and that should bring it out if you still can't see it I oh, know you should just be able to see it Okay, I'll go to my panels, perspective, the camera one, and here we go, and you should be able to see it fine. And then if I bring in some sort of shape or something, say cube, take off my grid, and you should be able to see that nicely. Okay, what I'm going to do is actually make it a little bit more interesting. I'm actually going to make some text, so go to create text box. ABC, that'll do Arial, go to my bevel and hit apply. See what that looks like. Alright. Press E for my rotate and just rotate it around. Scale it up just for a bit of fun. Might put that over here a bit actually. Okay, so basically now if you render it, I'm going to render with mental ray. So I go to my render settings, mental ray. And if mental ray doesn't come up, I know people probably know this because it's shown in every tutorial video. But basically, you go Windows, setting preferences, plugin manager, and you want to look for Maya and T O M R bundle and go load, auto load, and hit close, and then that should come up. And then you know, basically, you should be able to render it now. Um, I'm just going to go in my quality settings. I'll show you a couple of render things as well, so it makes it look a bit, a bit more tidier and nicer. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! This is actually a really good computer. It's just been left on for days. So, um, so it's moving a bit slow. I'm going to go into drafts. Production. Oh wait, I'll just show you what it looks like now and then you can check it out and fiddle with it afterwards. Okay, so that's what it looks like now. It, you can see that it kind of looks like it's in there, but it doesn't really look uber duber nice or lighting doesn't look too great. So I'm going to show you how you can fiddle around with that a little bit. So if you go into quality presets in Mental Ray and then go on production and go on features and I turn on my global illumination. 
my final gather, which is really important, and ambient occlusion. Come over to my common tab, scroll all the way down to render options, and this is quite important. Turn off enable default lighting because you do not want that on. And then we're going to go to indirect lighting and image based lighting, and this gives you sort of like a real world lighting look. Um, close that, and then if we come over to here, click on the file. And what you want is um, my HDR images. Well, HDRI, but yeah, you can get these on the internet. Just look them up, and these are for image-based lighting. Um, I'm going to go for. You want something a bit more precise than this, but this is just to show you what I'm trying to show you. So here's a good one. Hit open, and then. We want to scroll down and primary visibility off, that's quite important so you don't be able to see it in the final render so you can't see that. And then we're also going to go to our textures and create a mental ray texture, um, MIA X material, which is really good, I use these a lot, they look, make things look really nice. And then I think we'll just go on a matte plastic and replace, choose the colour you want, say a nice blue. Um, and then click on your letters and right click and assign material to selection and so these should change a nice blue colour ok so let's have a look at the render and see see what we make of it ok so this takes a bit longer to render but it'll look a lot nicer Okay, so that is looking like it's in there a bit more, but the main thing that we've got a problem with now is shadows. There's no shadows, and to make it look more convincing, you obviously need shadows in there. So that, I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. Um, what we want to do is create a plane, scale it up so it's nice and big or a reasonable size. Oh, and the other thing is these letters are not completely flat on the ground, so you want to go to our front view, hit F, 6 shaded and just move them up a bit and so they look like they're sat on the ground. That should do the trick and then what we want to do is go back into our textures and create where is that texture gone? Oh, yeah. come into our Maya textures and create a use background. Okay. I highlight our plane, right click on use background and assign new material, double click on here, wait for it to chunk up, load up, load up, load up, come on, and then, yeah, use background, and go on reflectivity, because you don't want to float to reflect it, that looks silly, and take that right down to zero, and then, what we should be able to do is, panel protective, camera, zero, one, oh shit, what else happened? Uh, press that, uh, Apple Z to get back, I don't know what I've done there. Close that, close that attributes, and maybe we'll spin around a little bit more so I get this in full view and hit render. And well, we didn't have our shadows before, now if you look, da -da 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 -da, we will have some shadows. And to me, that looks a lot more convincing that that's in there. I mean, there's a lot more things that you could fiddle around with, maybe fiddle around with a few things to do with the shadows and the lighting. I mean, you can see that the lighting from the top of these trees are lighting it. That, oh, the phone keeps buzzing, that would not be what's going on in this scene because there's shadows on these trees and of course there would still be shadows in the top of this. But I'm just showing you for this for, um, for you to have a go on. But you can see that those shadows are in the bottom up there and they look nice and tidy and it it looks reasonably convincing for like a first go looks alright but if you render the whole scene out you'll be able to see and um, I'll tell you what I'll render it I'll render this scene and then I'll show you it when it's finished I'll just pause the video hey guys here's the finished renders I've just put them into a quick time video clip check it out it's something like this it's obviously not perfect but some bit of fun, have a go yourself and I hope this video has been helpful and maybe send me some messages of your own uh, 
your own tries at PF Track. Thanks.